June 30th. A week since I dared to write again. It's slipping away like sand through my fingers. Most of the books I have are too hard for me now. I get angry with them because I know that I read and understood them just a few weeks ago. I keep telling myself I must keep writing these reports so that somebody will know what is happening to me. But it gets harder to form the words and remember spellings. I have to look up even simple words in the dictionary now, and it makes me impatient with myself. Dr. Strauss comes around almost every day, but I told him I wouldn't see or speak to anybody. He feels guilty. They all do. But I don't blame anyone. I knew what might happen, but how it hurts. July 7th. I don't know where the week went. Today's Sunday, I know, because I can see through my window people going to church. I think I stayed in bed all week, but I remember Mrs. Flynn bringing food to me a few times. I keep saying over and over I've got to do something, but then I forget, or maybe it's just easier not to do what I say I'm going to do. I think of my mother and father a lot these days. I found a picture of them with me taken at a beach. My father has a big ball under his arm, and my mother is holding me by the hand. I don't remember them the way they are in the picture. All I remember is my father drunk most of the time and arguing with mom about money. He never shaved much, and he used to scratch my face when he hugged me. My mother said he died, but cousin Milty said he heard his mom and dad say that my father ran away with another woman. When I asked my mother, she slapped my face and said my father was dead. I don't think I ever found out which was true, but I don't care much. He said he was going to take me to see cows on a farm once, but he never did. He never kept his promises. July 10th. My landlady, Mrs. Flynn, is very worried about me. She says the way I lay around all day and don't do anything, I remind her of her son before she threw him out of the house. She said she doesn't like loafers. If I'm sick, it's one thing, but if I'm a loafer, that's another thing, and she won't have it. I told her I think I'm sick. I try to read a little bit every day, mostly stories, but sometimes I have to read the same thing over and over again because I don't know what it means, and it's hard to write. I know I should look up all the words in the dictionary, but it's so hard and I'm so tired all the time. Then I got the idea that I would only use the easy words instead of the long, hard ones. That saves time. I put flowers on Algernon's grave about once a week. Mrs. Flynn thinks I'm crazy to put flowers on a mouse's grave, but I told her that Algernon was special. July 14th. It's Sunday again. I don't have anything to do to keep me busy now because my television set is broke and I don't have any money to get it fixed. I think I lost this month's check from the lab. I don't remember. I get awful headaches and aspirin doesn't help me much. Mrs. Flynn knows I'm really sick and she feels very sorry for me. She's a wonderful woman whenever someone is sick. July 22nd. Mrs. Flynn called a strange doctor to see me. She was afraid I was going to die. I told the doctor I wasn't too sick and that I only forget sometimes. He asked me, did I have any friends or relatives? And I said, no, I don't have any. I told him I had a friend called Algernon once, but he was a mouse and we used to run races together. He looked at me kind of funny like he thought I was crazy. He smiled when I told him I used to be a genius. He talked to me like I was a baby, and he winked at Mrs. Flynn. I got mad and chased him out because he was making fun of me the way they all used to. I have no more money, and Mrs. Flynn says I got to go to work somewhere and pay the rent because I haven't paid for over two months. I don't know any work but the job I used to have at Donegan's Plastic Box Company. I don't want to go back there because they all knew me when I was smart, and maybe they'll laugh at me but I don't know what else to do to get money. July 25th. I was looking at some of my old progress reports and it's very funny, but I can't read what I wrote. I can make out some of the words, but they don't make sense. Miss Kinnian came to the door, but I said, go away, I don't want to see you. She cried and I cried too, but I wouldn't let her in because I didn't want her to laugh at me. I told her I didn't like her anymore. I told her I didn't want to be smart anymore. That's not true. I still love her and I still want to be smart, but I had to say that so she'd go away. She gave Mrs. Flynn money to pay the rent. I don't want that. I got to get a job. Please, please let me not forget how to read and write. 
July 27th. Mr. Donegan was very nice when I came back and asked him for my old job of janitor. First, he was very suspicious, but I told him what happened to me, but then he looked very sad and put his hand on my shoulder and said, Charlie Gordon, you got guts. Everybody looked at me when I came downstairs and started working in the toilet, sweeping it out like I used to. I told myself, Charlie, if they make fun of you, don't get sore because you remember they're not so smart as you once thought they were. And besides, they were once your friends, and if they laughed at you, that doesn't mean anything because they liked you too. One of the new men who came to work there after I went away made a nasty crack. He said, hey, Charlie, I hear you're a very smart fella, a real quiz kid. Say something intelligent. I felt bad, but Joe Carp came over and grabbed him by the shirt and said, leave him alone, you lousy cracker, or I'll break your neck. I didn't expect Joe to take my part, so I guess he's really my friend. Later, Frank Riley came over and said, Charlie, if anybody bothers you or tries to take advantage, you call me or Joe and we will set them straight. I said, thanks, Frank, and I got choked up, so I had to turn around and go into the supply room so he wouldn't see me cry. It's good to have friends. July 28th. I did a dumb thing today. I forgot I wasn't in Miss Kinnian's class at the adult center anymore like I used to be. I went in and sat down in my old seat in the back of the room, and she looked at me funny, and she said, Charles. I didn't remember she ever called me that before, only Charlie, so I said, Hello, Miss Kinnian. I'm ready for my lesson today, only I lost my reader that we was using. She started to cry and run out of the room, and everybody looked at me, and I saw they wasn't the same people who used to be in my class. Then all of a sudden, I remembered some things about the operation and me getting smart, and I said, holy smoke, I really pulled a Charlie Gordon that time. I went away before she came back to the room. That's why I'm going away from New York for good. I don't want to do nothing like that again. I don't want Miss Kinnian to feel sorry for me. Everybody feels sorry at the factory, and I don't want that either. So I'm going someplace where nobody knows that Charlie Gordon was once a genius, and now he can't even read a book or write good. I'm taking a couple of books along, and even if I can't read them, I'll practice hard, and maybe I won't forget everything I learned. If I try real hard, maybe I'll be a little bit smarter than I was before the operation. I got my rabbit's foot and my lucky penny, and maybe they will help me. If you ever read this, Miss Kinnian, don't be sorry for me. I'm glad I got a second chance to be smart because I learned a lot of things that I never even knew were in this world, and I'm grateful that I saw it all for a little bit. I don't. Know why I'm dumb again or what I did wrong. Maybe it's because I didn't try hard enough. But if I try and practice very hard, maybe I'll get a little smarter and know what all the words are. I remember a little bit na how nice I had a feeling with the blue book that has the torn cover when I read it. That's what I'm going to keep trying to get smart so I can have that feeling again. It's a good feeling to know things and be smart. I wish I had it right now. If I did, I would sit down and read all the time. Anyway, I bet I'm the first dumb person in the world who ever found out something important for science. I remember I did something, but I don't remember what. So I guess it's like I did it for all the dumb people like me. Goodbye, Miss Kinnian and Dr. Strauss and everybody. And P.S. Please tell Dr. Niemer not to be such a grouch when people laugh at him and he would have more friends. It's easy to make friends if you let people laugh at you. I'm going to have lots of friends where I go. P.P.S. Please, if you get a chance, put some flowers on Algernon's grave in the backyard.